Which one do you think is gonna win? The bigger one or the smaller one? Make your predictions down below. Look at all those thrusters going. I have no idea how many thrusters that is. It's going down. Two more shots should do it. One. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Scrapman bringing you another episode of Cosmeteer. Uh, last time we built this thing, which is a basically a giant ship eater, which was probably one of my favorite creations yet. That just devours ships inside of it. But one of the more requested suggestions in the comments from that episode was to build the fastest ships possible. So I think that's something that we can actually do because I can control multiple ships and we can probably actually plot a course for them to race and we can see which ships are are fastest that I built. And the only thing about this is aerodynamics does not come into play here, so we're not gonna really be building anything based off of aerodynamics, because in space there's no air resistance. It's really basically gonna be a, a balance between mass and thrust. So basically, the least amount of mass with the most amount of thrust. So I kind of feel like just more thrusters equals faster, and there's really not much more to it, but we're also gonna want maneuverability if we're gonna have them make turns and stuff, so we're gonna want to place thrusters in very specific areas and also shape the ship I guess so that the thrusters are best suited to make it be agile as well as fast so let's start off with um, let's just start off simple and we're just gonna put a whole bunch of thrusters uh, and power them the ships that I'm gonna start off building here are going to be purely based off of speed and maneuverability we're gonna ignore weaponry and defense for now we're just gonna look at fast ships okay there we go so I think in my mind, at least right now, technically this should be the fastest we can go with one line of thrusters. Let's just pit it up against like a random ship. Uh, is, what about a shark? Oh, that thing is big. Let's use this shark. Let's see, uh, let's race this thing against a shark and we're gonna see who is faster. All right, so I guess if I just select, I'm gonna pause right now. So I guess we'll see how long it takes each of them to get over there? All right, let's see what happens. Here we go in three, two, one, race. Whoa, okay, very clear difference. Very clear difference. Wow, he's already slowing down to try to meet that area. That's actually really cool. So now that I think about it, having more thrusters on the front means that it can maintain a faster speed for a longer time before it has to start slowing down. All right, and <laughs> the shark is finally getting there. So apparently the hammerhead is not the fastest thing. So yeah, I guess this this is the main, the main thing to create the fastest ship is the least amount of mass per thruster. So you basically want uh, each thrust, like the, all the mass of your ship to go towards powering a thruster. So we have each of these reactor cores and then the walkways to get the power there fast. So the walkways might actually be kind of a, a burt, more of a burden than anything else. Here's gonna be a cool experiment. Let's see how much of a difference adding more backwards thrust actually makes. Cause then we can have this ship versus the same ship with backwards thrust on it. That'll be a fun experiment. A hypothesis is that this is actually, it's not going to make it faster, but it's going to make it more agile in the sense that it can maintain a higher speed for a longer period of time and then stop at its final destination. So we'll see, we'll see how this works. Now the only other thing is now this has a lot more mass, so its acceleration will probably, probably be a little bit slower. All right, so both ships are ready. They have the same amount of forward thrusters, but this one, has more backwards thrusters and more mass. So here, here's my prediction. This one's gonna take off faster. I'm gonna make it a really long distance. This one is going to have a bigger acceleration, but they're, going to, they're then going to reach the same max speed. So that one might still be a little bit more ahead. But as they reach their final destination, this one's gonna have to slow down sooner because this one is going to be able to slow down faster. So we're gonna see which one do you think is gonna win? The bigger one or the smaller one? Make your predictions down below. In three, two, one, go. All right, this one's accelerating faster. They should cap out at a max speed though. Uh, here we go, uh, he's already slowing down. There we go, and now this one's passing because it didn't have to slow down as quick. 
There we go, I was right. So this one, despite being heavier and having no more forward thrust, it is actually more agile, so it got there quicker. So this is actually a really fun kind of like physics experiment. Look, he's still trying to recover from all of that momentum, but he was able to do it so much quicker. This is actually really interesting. So now I'm really curious, let's make a small ship that is much less mass and see if we can, uh, see if we can get something that can beat these over a shorter distance with a lot less thrust because of acceleration. Let's go for that. Okay, I've got something here. Uh, it's interesting trying to work with the dead zone, the fire zones of the thrusters because that limits a lot of what you can do as far as thruster placement because it just takes up so much space that you can't place anything. Um, so it actually actually ended up being a lot more empty or dead space than I thought it was going to be, especially the way I have to space out the thrusters. So I tried to make the walkways as efficient as possible. There's a chance I may have too many walkways. I'm actually going to make two versions of the ship. I'm going to make this version, and then I'm going to make a, a bare-bones walkway version to see if we, if we can just have a single corridor going around. We'll be able to get rid of a lot of mass, and I just don't know if that'll affect the, the thruster power a lot if the, if the crew is moving really, really slowly. So now I really have no idea what to expect uh, as far as this ship compared to these ships. I think, honestly, this ship is just going to be worse overall. It weighs a lot less, so it might get acceleration off the bat from them, but this these things just have so much more thrust that the acceleration just might beat it out anyway. But we're going to find out. Uh, so first we're gonna do that, then we're gonna strip this ship down to just a single walkway and see what that difference makes. And then after that, I'm gonna try to create the most thruster-based thing I could possibly do. I'm just gonna have layers upon layers of thrusters, if I can. It'll be interesting, but uh, we're just gonna start, try to see if we can actually make the fastest ship possible in this build box. So we'll see how that plays out as well. I guess we'll have them race up to here. We'll see how this goes. So make your predictions now. We got ship number left, middle, and right. <laughs> number left, number middle, or number right. You take your pick now. Uh, well, we already know that the left one is faster than the right one as far as a long distance goes. Uh, so now it's just a matter of is this one going to be faster than either of them or both of them or none of them. So make your predictions. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one, go. It's just terrible. It is just terrible. <laughs> Look at how bad that ship is. It really is about, like, this number of thrusters, I think, is the real factor here. It's just how many thrusters can you fit on the thing. But actually, I gotta admit, it's doing compared- it actually might technically beat this one. Look at this. This is an unexpected result. Okay. This one, I think, technically wins. It got to its final destination quicker. I mean, as far as a drag race goes, it loses because it didn't pass through the finish line as quick, but as far as agility goes, this one is way more agile because it settled down on its position quicker because it has uh, more thrusters to slow it down. Now I want to test my um, mass theory. So do we need the walkways or not? Can the thrusters maintain their power without the walkways? All right, so here we go. So what I'm going to do is I don't even know if I want to use fast walkways at all. I might just use a normal corridor that just uh, brings, that just gives access to every single thruster. So let's try that and see how it affects our power distribution. So there it is. I think that's pretty much the minimum amount of quarters that we can have. So now let's see, now which one do you think is going to be faster? Well, obviously this one's going to be faster, but I'm going to actually have it a really long distance. Do you think this one can maintain the power without having quick access to all of the thrusters? And I'm actually going to do it at four times speed because we already know that this one is faster. It's just a matter of by the by the time it gets there, is it going to run out, out of power or no? Here we go in three, two, one, go! And you can see on the map there, it is just leaving it in the d wait, whoa! Hold on a second, hold on a second. This is incredible, actually. This is really cool. Wow! Okay, so this is actually an effect of the power management. As thrusters on the back side run out of power, and there's more thrusters with power on the front side, it turns around to keep the maximum amount of forward thrust. So it is actually being affected, whereas this one here... 
Oh, it's, it's even running out of power. Actually, it's doing the same thing. Okay, I guess the walkways don't make that big of a difference. But that is actually super cool to see, to see happen. It keeps optimizing for the maximum forward amount of thrust as the power runs out in some of the thrusters. All right, I'm actually really impressed with that. That's really cool. All right, so it seems like that uh, it doesn't really make that big of a difference as far as the moving walks walkways go. So lighter is just faster. Bare minimum walkways. So you know what that means? I can make those other ships even faster. Let's try that now. We're gonna put the ship against itself, one with the walkways and uh, one without the walkways. All right, so now, now make your predictions. They have the same amount of thrusters. This one's slightly lighter but might run out of power quicker. I'm thinking this one's still gonna do better if the walkways don't really make that much of a difference, but let's find out, here we go. Three, I'm gonna go at two times for now. Actually, no, one times for now, then we'll speed up. Three, two, one, go. Definitely faster, that one row has made actually a pretty huge difference. So now the question is, is this thing going to do the flippy thing as it runs out of power? Here, let's go to two times. Oh, it's doing it, it's doing it. Is that going to affect its overall speed though compared to the other one? I can't even see the other one. That one's kind of doing it. Not nearly up oh, yet, yeah, it's still doing it. It's definitely still doing it. All right, and this one, oh, it's reached its destination. It has reached its destination. This one is starting to get there. Wow, it's really having some power issues. It doesn't know what to do. It does not know what to do. Huh. So, this one is definitely way better. It still has to do the power thing. So now I have one more experiment with this before I do the final mega thruster thing. I want to see if I give each one of these thrusters its own power core. Are we going to enable it to maintain constant power and no longer have to uh, do its whole turning around thing? All right, now let's see if this makes a difference. We're gonna follow that ship. Hopefully it'll maintain its power more and won't have to do the weird flipping thing, which probably slows it down quite a bit. All right, here we go. So I know this ship is gonna go faster at first, but is this ship going to beat it in the long run? Here we go. Oh boy. Oh, wait, what? Why is he losing? I thought having all those reactors would make it better. Is there something I'm not understanding about power? I don't get it. Wait, 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 he's catching up. He is catching up. He is starting to catch up. Look at this. I don't know where the end is though. Where's the end? How close are we? This is gonna be a close race. He took the lead. He actually took the lead. Look at that! I That actually surprised me. The way it started off, it seemed like it didn't make that big of a difference, but look at that. This one has so much more power than that one did when he got there. I was actually really surprised by that. That was a cool experiment. Okay, well, let's get on to the finale of the episode now, where we just build the biggest thing of thrusters that we can possibly build. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is possibly the fastest ship you can build in the build box. I think it has literally the most amount of forward thrusters you can probably put while still having at least some backwards thrusters. Here, I'll show you the build box actually. So that's the build, like the, the build box ends right at the edge of these thrusters and you can see it ends right up here and I can't put anything else up here. So we're pretty much, is stocked up as we can be. And I got some sideways thrusters going along in the middle to add some for some maneuverability. So I feel like we don't have as many backward thrusters as we should have or that for, for slowing down, but we're gonna roll with it for now and see just what happens. So let's compare the speed of this ship to the speed of the previous fastest ship, which was technically the one with all the reactor cores um, in a line. All right, so I guess I'm gonna line them up so at the front of the ship is lined up kind of and actually we're gonna have not just that one but the one without the reactor core so we're gonna have the high acceleration one and then this was the one that won out over the long run because it had more reactor power so 
we're gonna see how these all compare to each other. So now, what's your prediction? I mean, I think this one's pretty much gonna win overall, but it's pretty heavy, it's pretty big. It might be a little bit slower. So let's highlight them all. We're gonna pause and we're gonna zoom out here and cover somewhat of a long distance and we're gonna see what happens. All right, here, for some reason, it automatically set them like this and I don't know why. But we're just gonna roll with it. Whoever gets to their zone first uh, is the winner. So make your predictions now. I mean, I think this is possibly the fastest ship, but we're gonna find out. Three, two, one, blast off. This is not at all the way I expected this thing to go. Why is it doing this? This is not what I was expecting to happen. I thought you were gonna be a lot faster, Mr. Ship Thing. Oh, they're, all right, now they're losing it. They lost their power, they lost their momentum, they lost their speed because they had to switch for the power uh, consumption. All right, but this one is definitely winning out by far. Look at all those thrusters going. I have no idea how many thrusters that is. That is, is pretty much as many thrusters as we can have here. That is amazing. All right, let's speed it up. See what, like you can see, up oh, and he is, oh, he's losing it kinda. He, and he has docked into his position. The other ships are pretty much nowhere to be seen. Like they are still pretty far behind. Here, let's go back to them and see what's going on back here. Uh, it looks like, is this the smaller one? It looks like the smaller one is still in the lead, but this guy is catching up. It really is a big distance thing for these two. This one will definitely win out over any short sprint, but this one, as you can see, now he's finally passing in the long run because this one's running out of power. But now they're finally approaching. Wow, that was actually, this one was way better. I mean, that's kind of what I expected, but at the same time, it started off so poorly. All right, and now that one's done, and this one's done. So I think technically this one, this one is, this one is last place for the long distance, but I think that would get, it could get first place in a really short one, but it would get second place in like a medium distance. And then this one is definitely faster in the long run, but not, doesn't quite have the acceleration because of the weight. And then this one is just, there's so many thrusters on this. So I think it's time to blow them up now. We're gonna use the ship eater on this guy here first, and then we're gonna just gonna use, let's use the X-wing on this guy. We'll aim it at a reactor core and then watch the chain reaction happen. And I did turn screen shaking off, so thanks for those comments. We will no longer get those obnoxious screen, screen shakes. All right, here we go. He should approach. Uh-oh, uh-oh, is he gonna, oh, don't hit the end. Oh, oh, there we go. All right, we're good, we're good. Oh, he's got that end of there. Come on, ship, you can get, there we go. Now he has completely enveloped him as much as he can. Okay, here we go in three, two, one. Yeah. Well, that was pretty much instant. Oh, and he's gonna die, because he's on fire, and I don't think I saved him with the, uh, with the whatchamacallits, the fire extinguishers, so yeah. He is gonna be gone soon. Okay, next up is this guy. So we're just, I'm gonna spawn in the X-Wing. Yeah, we're gonna have the X-Wing take out this guy. So we're just gonna have you and, yeah, I guess you could just attack him automatically. Let's act, let's focus on, focus on the reactor core, why don't you? There you go, there you go. Right, actually, wait, slow motion. We're gonna do this in slow motion now, people. How is the health? It's going down, two more shots should do it, one. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, whoa, look at the bending. That is, I did, wait, why didn't it go up to here? That's really weird here though, focus on this now, focus on this. That fire should get there anyway. All right, let's do it real time. Real time explosion now for the, re for the last chain reaction here. What's gonna happen first, this one or that one? Oh, there it goes. That is so satisfying. 
And uh, yeah, just go ahead. You can attack this ship for the outro. So I think that was a great way to end off the episode. Always with a chain reaction seems to be the best way to go. So, um, and it was it was much more much more easy to, to see it all without the screen shake. So glad we got that settled. Well, let me know what you want to see in the next Cosmoteer episode. You guys have been really liking the series and really looking forward to it. So uh, let me know what other kind of ship experiments or builds you'd like to see, or even like chain reaction experiments or something. Leave those suggestions down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the future episodes. This has been Scrapman, and I'll. See you next time. Bye.